Hey, it's Monday, the day before Citrix uh, Synergy starts. We're here in Vegas. Started out super, super early this morning, 4.30 for a five o'clock, you know, drive to the airport. But today we've had a chance to sit down with, you know, all the Citrix executives, walk through all the things we're gonna be announcing, meet with some of the uh, Citrix technology partners, and just really give a, a you know, a, a complete walk through of what we're gonna be announcing over the next couple of days. I'm so excited to talk about the things that we've been working on. I think this is the most significant you know, update and strengthening of this Microsoft Citrix partnership in the 10 years that I've been working on it. I, this is just a significant reinvigoration of what I think is one of the, the industry's oldest and longest partnerships. So now I want to ask my friend Brad Anderson from Microsoft, Corporate VP, Enterprise Client Mobility, to come on out. Brad. Hey, good morning, Bill. How you doing, pal? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to be here. So, hey, thanks for coming out. Great. It's been amazing to be here the last three days. Um, you know. I think what I would classify what we announced yesterday and today is you know, a significant reinvigoration and strengthening of what I think is one of the industry's longest and oldest partnerships. And it's been amazing to be here and just get the feedback and you know, I spent all day yesterday meeting with customers and partners, it was phenomenal. Hey, uh, after three days of uh, being down here in Vegas at the Citrix Synergy Conference, we're at the airport and ready to head back. Uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, it's been three great days, long days of back-to-back -back meetings with you know, partners, customers, press, analysts, Citrix, uh, Citrix sellers. Um, it's been nothing but a blast. And you know, the feedback about the strength and the renewed partnership between Microsoft and Citrix, overwhelming. The energy about this you know, long-running, long-standing partnership being reinvigorated in this way, you know, it surpassed all my expectations, certainly I think all the expectations of everybody who's worked on this for the past couple of months. You know, there were four key things that we talked about um, in the keynote this morning as well as what Kilo rolled out yesterday. First and foremost, Citrix has now identified Azure as its preferred and strategic cloud going forward, meaning that they're going to be building all of their services as they help customers move to the cloud and take advantage of, of, of the cloud capabilities and that cloud agility is going to be based first and foremost on Azure. So now, Azure. Anyway, we made an announcement, preferred and strategic partner, Citrix said about Azure. Talk to us about the numbers. Talk about the growth. Yeah, it's, it's astounding. I get a chance to sit in these weekly service reviews and just to take a look at the number of servers, the amount of storage being deployed every week, it's mind boggling. And, and here at Citrix, the Citrix Cloud, we're gonna be, it's gonna be built on Azure, one. Two, Azure first for all new cloud solutions. So we, we talked earlier about Secure Browser, that's an Azure Cloud built solution. And finally, our commitment is we're going to be there ready day zero, Windows Server 2016, which ships a little later this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to be ready because we know as you move into the new platform, you want to make sure everything can be validated. So we're there, we're ready to go. Second thing, we talked about how we're going to help organizations together accelerate their move to Windows 10. You know, the level of interest that people have in Windows 10, you know, as two-in-ones, I mean, people want both touch and mouse, the, the enhanced security inside of Windows 10 is just off the charts in terms of demand. Citrix has capabilities that allows organizations to quickly identify if they have any application compatibility issues, and then we see a bump up whenever a new operating system is deployed in the use of virtualization, and so Citrix will play, I think, I think a, an interesting role there as organizations accelerate their move to Windows 10. Windows 10, man, you guys are on fire. What we're seeing right now in terms of the interest and the appetite for Windows 10 is like nothing we've ever seen before. So the demand is high, and Citrix has a number of things that are going to help organizations accelerate the upgrade and migration to Windows 10. 
Absolutely, and, and one of them is AppDNA. So we talked about AppDNA earlier, and, and while I, you know, as I said, Win10's got these you know, great capabilities to move your apps, but we, we were talking about this before, Brad and I, and you're like, look, if you just don't even have 10% of your apps validated, what would that mean, the pain, the time? So using AppDNA for rapid app validation is a big thing, and we, we've offered it to our joint partners, so any of you, the resellers that you work with, have access to AppDNA to help make that happen. So take advantage of that. We talked about helping organizations uh, accelerate their move to Office 365. You know, Office 365 has just surpassed everybody's expectations. Literally every single customer that I met with over the last three days here at Synergy was telling me about their plans to move to Office 365. And so first and foremost, you know, we've got these beautiful, rich mobile applications on iOS and on Android that people love. But many companies have got things that they've built over the years like plugins or macros that actually require the Win32 versions of the apps. So Citrix, you know, who has, you know, they really invented the category, has the most comprehensive capabilities to both remote desktops and apps. You can use that to remote those applications that have those needs while still letting the users use the, uh, the rich application on iOS and on Android. The other thing we talked about with respect to Office is their unique uh, integration with Skype for Business. We literally have engineered Skype for Business to take advantage of the HDX protocol so that you get this smooth experience, this what I call a dial tone experience for voice and for data, even when you're running in a centralized environment, only if you're running Citrix. The level of integration that we've done is unique to that Citrix HDX protocol. It's not there with the VDI solution that we built from Microsoft nor from VMware. So if you're asking the question, which solution is best to host Office 365 and Skype for Business in, it's Citrix. If you take a look at Office 365, it has become the most commonly used service, cloud service, in the enterprise. So let's talk about some of the things that Citrix does here, and then we'll talk about some of the ways that we've actually engineered Office 365 yeah. for, the, for the, uh, the Citrix environment. I mean, so these are, you know, beautiful apps being delivered, but sometimes they need plugins and macros. And that's where we come together and help the customer get those macros and plugins delivered as well. So about 18 months ago, the Skype for Business team was out doing their, you know, their standard research, and they heard loud and clear, we need Skype for Business to run you know, in an optimal way in the Citrix environment. So the Skype for Business team actually has engineered Skype for Business to be optimized in Citrix environments. So we've integrated with HDX, and it's the only protocol that we've integrated with. You know, then we actually took the Skype for Business app and split it in two. So a portion of it runs in the data center and a portion of it runs on the client when you're in a Citrix environment. This is the only VDI solution that Skype for Business has been optimized for. So if you want to ask the question, if I'm going to be doing centralized desktops or centralized apps, what's the best way to do it? Citrix. And then the fourth thing we talked about is how we're aligning and integrating more of our mobile technologies. You know, we talked this morning about the incredible momentum behind the Enterprise Mobility Suite now being the largest enterprise mobility management solution on the market by number of customers. We have more than 27,000 unique customers and growing, making it, again, the largest uh, uh, EMM solution on the market. And we talked about how we're going to integrate the Citrix capabilities with the EM EMS capabilities. So there are four specific things that we called out. One, all of the Citrix apps are going to become EMS MAM enabled. That means they're going to be able to participate in the same container that Office and all the SAP Fiori apps and Adobe and Box and others are in. When you take a look at that ecosystem that's being built, that are, that, that's all EMS and Intune enabled, you combine that with all the apps that are uh, app config enabled, because of course we can support app config. This is the largest managed app ecosystem in the industry. If you want to have the best and the most relevant set of applications, you need to come and use those with the Enterprise Mobility Suite. But every one of you have told us, you know, Microsoft Citrix, integrate your, your enterprise mobility capabilities more so we get more combined value. And so what we've done, we've been working on here now is, is how do we make sure that there's integrated value for all the Citrix assets in the enterprise mobility suite? And then how do we make sure that if you're a Zen Mobile customer, the enterprise mobility suite adds value to you? So there's four things I want to touch on real quickly that we're doing. First of all, all of the Citrix apps are going to be natively instrumented in line to understand the EMS MAM. What that will allow is all the Citrix apps, Receiver, Works, the new forms that we saw yesterday, ShareFile's already done this work, can now participate in the same MAM container as the Office mobile apps, as all the SAP Fiori apps, there are hundreds of those, Adobe, Box, and others. You take that app ecosystem and the fact that we also manage all apps that are app config enabled, this is now the largest managed app ecosystem in the industry. And that all applies now in a Zen mobile world. Number two, NetScaler is going to be EMS enabled. And what that means is, as EMS managed apps and devices come through NetScaler at their perimeter, 
Netscaler is going to interact with the EMS services and will be able to enforce conditional access based upon the policies that have been set by EMS. So what that means is that organizations who are using Zen Mobile will now just be able to use enterprise mobility suite capabilities, specifically the MAM capabilities, let me hit a jackpot, as well as capabilities like they're integrating with the identity, things like multi-factor authentication and self-service password reset. So that's number one. So for Zen Mobile customers, great solution for adding EMS value into your environment. Then going forward, there, there's, a, there's three additional things we're going to do. The second one is the Netscaler solution, which is that boundary that allows you to basically you know, have a pass-through as you're having or users that, that are accessing content behind the firewall. Netscaler will be EMS enabled. And what that's going to allow is an Intune managed device or devices that have Intune managed apps on it. As they're attempting to access those on-premises resources, Netscaler is going to integrate with the EMS services and verify any conditional access rules and then apply those, giving us the ability to have conditional access to any on-prem app uh, through Intune. That's number two. Number three, we're actually going to take the Netscaler capabilities and embed them into the EMS Intune MAM SDK. And what that's going to allow is organizations using that SDK can now have apps talk directly to the applications behind the firewall without even having to bring up a VPN. Sometimes this capability is referred to as micro VPN, but that's now going to be all possible through the Netscaler solution. All those things are going to be available by the end of the calendar year, so we're, we're really excited about that. Now the fourth thing that we're doing in enterprise mobility is Citrix is going to start building a new enterprise mobility management service on Azure. And then what we're going to do is this new service from Citrix is going to integrate with the back-end services of EMS. We'll be able to share information and, and, and the EMM service from Citrix will actually be able to instruct the EMS services on things they would like it to go do. And so think of this as value added in the cloud applying to the EMS world. But the bottom line here is, if you are an EMS customer, if you're a Citrix customer, you're going to get integrated value before like you've never seen from us in the past. You know, I've been managing this Citrix Microsoft relationship for more than 10 years. This is the deepest I've ever seen and the most broad I've ever seen this partnership. So again, it's been a fantastic three days. You know, I'm ecstatic to see how Kirill's doing there and how he's really focusing Citrix on what I think is their core business. I look forward to taking this partnership to the next level and uh, delivering more and more value for you.